All right, man, we're diving deep into the latest chapter of Boruto 2 Blue Vortex, Chapter 7. It's gonna be an in depth analysis. I'll be breaking the chapter down, exploring various theories, my own predictions, and hints on what's to come. So, with that being said, buckle up and let's get straight to it. The chapter starts by giving an insight of Mitsuki's thoughts and beliefs. It's a very poetic introspection, actually. So, he envisions himself as a moon surrounded by darkness. He can't cast light on his own and is reliant on a sun, and he perceives Kawagi as that sun that can illuminate. Him. And then in the chapter, we return to where we left off from chapter 6. Boruto flew away from where Mitsuki first confronted him and landed in a location far beyond Kawaki's range of detection. Though his attempt to distance himself was spoiled when Mitsuki, who had been following him, caught up to him. In this chapter, we get the full showdown between Boruto and Mitsuki. While Mitsuki charges towards Boruto, Boruto throws two shurikens at him and Mitsuki blocks them by his snake chakras, leading one of the shurikens to land in a tree. So, in his sage mode, Boruto attacks him with his snake chakras, but Boruto manages to dodge the attacks with a few close calls. So Mitsuki was on the offense and the snakes were attacking quickly, hitting the ground and they ended up pushing Boruto farther away, forcing him to resort to using his flying Raijin and teleport to the tree where he had previously lodged a shuriken. So the shuriken had been strategically marked for a potential escape. He teleports behind Mitsuki and then asks about Kawaki's whereabouts. He expected Kawaki to be the one approaching him, not Mitsuki. Shikamaru reveals to him that Mitsuki took out Kawaki to prevent Boruto from sensing their approach. And here Mitsuki drops a whole bombshell. He admits to Boruto that he must be way stronger than Kawaki with the way he made Koi to retreat. Now this reveals two things. One, it is bluntly stated that Boruto is way stronger than Kawaki at this point. Now a few of us thought that when it came to the time skip, they would be pretty much equal and that would lead to the battle we see in the first episode. But nah man, it seems like Boruto has really overworked and realistically, it does make sense since Boruto has been in the trenches for like 3 years while Kawaki is like living his best life. We know that he was also training but apparently not as hard as Boruto. And 2, since Boruto and Code were playing hide and seek all these years, Code has also gotten stronger. Now I'm not gonna say that Code could take down Kawaki but it does seem like their power levels are much closer than we had thought. I must still give the edge to Kawaki though. Yeah, so that's why Mitsuki took out Code. He didn't want him to get killed off by Boruto and Boruto tells him that if Kawaki didn't stand a chance, Mitsuki wouldn't either. But it seems that Mitsuki has an additional reason for excluding Kawaki. While apparently channeling Chakra in his sage mode form, he mentioned that it's about completely letting loose without deferring to him. Now initially, I thought that he meant fighting Boruto without holding back and being considerate of Kawaki. However, when Boruto asked for clarification, I was caught off guard there. Now I'm uncertain about the meaning itself, especially since Mitsuki says that it's a secret between him and Kawaki. Regardless though, Mitsuki unleashed a new jutsu we haven't seen him use. It's a unique jutsu yet simple at its core. Aesthetically though, this is hard as hell. So in his sage mode form, he shoots dozens of snakes in the direction of Boruto. Those snakes then transform into clones of himself and now we have dozens of Mitsuki's flying towards Boruto. And each clone launches a massive snake chakra towards him. And I don't even know at this point if Boruto got like a super speed or reaction as he manages to dodge those snakes. And we know what crazy boost sage mode gives. Boruto is somehow poking fun at the destruction around him, telling him that more snakes are better and he is destroying nature whilst he is effortlessly dodging them man. Mitsuki blames Boruto and suggests that he should just off himself. Boruto says that he might be at fault but can't afford to die just yet. He has more important things to do and he finally starts taking things seriously. So the whole time Boruto was on the defense, not putting on a fight. Now he easily flies past the snakes and closes in on the clones whilst drawing his sword for the first time during this fight. We see a glimpse of what's to come from the slight lightning surrounding his hand and he cloaks his sword with some kind of lightning jutsu and slashes all of the clones. I'm pretty sure it's a purple lightning again since he had previously used it during their first encounter and it looks similar. It has this wide outline that is quite uncommon and we get a distance faced off between them. Mitsuki is in disbelief at how fast Boruto is moving. He forms a sign jutsu and so does Boruto after sheathing his sword. So they both throw a version of lightning release and it seems like Boruto knew what attack Mitsuki was going for. Mitsuki performs snake lightning and Boruto thunderbolt which we have seen him use before. They clash and it creates this cloud of smoke making Mitsuki momentarily lose sight of Boruto. Out of nowhere Boruto appears next to him almost dealing the finishing blow stopping just before his neck. 
Dominic. Now here Mitsuki realizes that it's over and the power is out of his sage mode, telling Boruto to go ahead and get it over with. Boruto says that it's almost like Mitsuki has lost his hope. He can no longer trust what he used to believe. Boruto uses Mitsuki's own terms, which resonate with him, saying that the sun that had been illuminating him lost its radiant at some point. Aida believes that he held regarding Kawaki at some point stop aligning. Shikamaru could only hear Boruto so he asks Ino to connect to Mitsuki to hear what he's saying as well. Ino rejects it and says that it will open their conversation to Mitsuki as well so it's too risky. Now here Mitsuki in response to Boruto's statement tells him to stop pretending as if he knows him and Boruto makes it clear. He tells him that he is his son and this shot of Boruto man looks cold as hell I can't lie. Now Mitsuki captures him with a snake and almost goes to bite him expecting Boruto to escape but he just stood there unfazed. Mitsuki is in disbelief at this moment and he doesn't go for the attack. Boruto says that even Mitsuki should have realized that Kawaki is not his son. He cannot illuminate Mitsuki no matter how close Mitsuki sticks to him. Mitsuki looks hella confused at this moment and Boruto says that it's natural to feel confused but only Mitsuki himself knows the truth and only he knows what it takes to be his son. Mitsuki releases him and asks who he really is and here Boruto reveals his true intention man. He reveals to him that he doesn't intend on killing Kawaki and that is a misunderstanding. Rather he just intends to settle some matters with him as bros. Mitsuki then asks him why he killed Naruto the seventh Hokage and Boruto lets him know that even that information about him is false. He reassures Mitsuki as well as Shikamaru and Ino who are listening in through the mind transfer jutsu that Naruto is alive and well along with Hinata. Here he almost utters the words mom but stops himself from saying that. Now the reason for that and the reason why Boruto all this time has tried to use vague and formal terms and train himself out of using those personal and familiar terms, that reason is revealed in this chapter which we'll eventually cover when we get to it. Returning to the chapter itself, Mitsuki appears flabbergasted and seems very curious at this point. Now we didn't get to see Mitsuki's next question as Boruto cuts him off but if I had to guess man, I mean he doesn't know what to think of Boruto in this instant and therefore he was probably going to ask him about his true objective. Anyways, contrary to Mitsuki's beliefs, Boruto asserts that he, Mitsuki can shine independently and Boruto has his doors open for him if he insists on needing a son and he assures him that he can be found anytime and the shot that's drowned on Mitsuki's impressions bruh. Like that was Boruto dealing the final blow. Meanwhile, Ino and Shikamaru are fixated on the news of Naruto being alive. Shikamaru tells Boruto to get to a known spot, they need to talk. The scene then switches to Ada's residence place. Now I didn't expect this to be this early but apparently Kawaki has woken up and the first thing he asks is about Mitsuki's whereabouts. Now before we get into the juicy bits of that, let's go back a little bit. So Ada appears shocked from seeing Kawaki and if we pay more attention to the last chapter we know that Kawaki walked up the stairs and then went out from the upstairs door where he also got put to sleep. And after that Mitsuki tells Shikamaru to make Ada use her Senrigan to inform them of Naruto's exact location. Now considering this, it doesn't seem unrealistic to assume that she likely checked for Kawaki's whereabouts as well and therefore she might have already known what had happened to Kawaki. So if that is the case I don't know why she would be putting on an act. Well it seems so anyways. Now we've just gone through the climax of Boruto versus Mitsuki but what if this is the start of another conflict that Mitsuki has to take on as well. A fight between Mitsuki and Kawaki. We've noticed for the entirety of 2 Blue Vortex that there's been a tension growing between them. Although that was for the most part Mitsuki's feeling of despair and loss of his son which Boruto also resolved, there might be yet another tension building up now after what happened to Kawaki cause I don't think he will just accept that from Mitsuki and let it go. I think we might see something happen there and according to the storyline at this moment I don't think it will end as fast as this fight when Boruto truly got serious. Because we have that statement of Mitsuki which I'm still reflecting on. Coming back to the story though this part finally covers the big reason behind the apparent distance Boruto has created. So in the conversation between Shikamaru and Boruto, Shikamaru finally understands the root cause of the omnipotence and Boruto explains why Ada's omnipotence is so hard to decode. He explains that understanding Understanding it is not the hardest part, rather remembering the cause in itself is an impossible task. Apparently Boruto has somehow figured out the exact functions of the omnipotence. Boruto advises Shikamaru not to bother understanding how the omnipotence works since they will eventually forget it anyways. He says that in fact it's not the first time he has heard this, rather Sarada and Sumire have told him numerous times. 
Furthermore, Walter actually explains that the very concept of omnipotence won't endure in their minds. It will fade away over time as part of its power. Hence, Walter will need Shikamaru to over time blindly believe that he and Kawaki had switched places, since the core of omnipotence will vanish from their minds. Now here we get a worried stare from both Shikamaru and Ilo. Shikamaru asks how they can reverse it and Walter gets straight to the point. He basically says that reversing it is impossible and that is the reality that they have to live with. And he also says that even if they could reverse it, the issue between him and Kawaki wouldn't get solved by that. And it would simply repeat itself. Now, Shikamaru being real over here, he says that if he was Boruto, he would be rescuing Naruto and killing Kawaki. But Boruto here shares his state of mind. He says that although Kawaki wants to kill him, he doesn't want that for Kawaki. Boruto says that he intends to beat him up and then go along after that as brothers. Basically like how Naruto did with the Sasuke. And Shikamaru dissecting the situation says that Boruto will have to take the false blames regarding Naruto's death if he doesn't want to kill Kawaki. Shikamaru states that he wants Kawaki in control and doesn't want him to feel cornered again. And therefore Boruto has to stay as a fugitive. And Boruto here is fine with the idea and says that he intended to do so from the start. Hence the reason why Boruto has kept that distance from the get-go. It's because that he doesn't want the village to figure out the truth about his identity. And this explains why he kept that distance when talking with Sumire and Mitsuki. One could also argue the conversation with Shigedai but that was very brief. And there's many instances where Boruto stops himself from calling Sasuke as uncle. Calling him instead for his master. And again the same thing happened when he for the second time returned to the village. Upon seeing Sarada and Sumire. Now of course he was aware that Sarada knew the truth but he didn't know that about Sumire. Hence he had to again reformulate his statement. And in the presence of Mitsuki, Boruto almost said the words mom but again he stopped himself. He also stopped the conversation short and avoided going into details about Naruto. Now we transition to the Shinju's residence place. Jura is astonished by knowledge itself. By reading books he learns but the more he learns the more questions arise. And there are some questions he's searching answer for and apparently none of the books he has read has answered his questions. I mean the questions are possibly in regards to the world itself. To me it feels like he might become one of those philosophy villains in the end with his own like moral codes. But yeah man there's definitely more to see from Jura. He's very interesting so far. And he finally decides to step back to the fighting and says that they shall pay a visit to Naruto Uzumaki. And that's where the chapter ends. Now I'm not gonna lie man, the spoilers, they were, they were ass bruh. Like I got more questions than answers from it. And some of the stuff that I even speculated in the spoiler video are not even mentioned in the official chapter. So yeah man, I'm here right now thinking I might actually quit reading the spoilers. Anyways, coming back to the topic. Jura clearly mentions Naruto by name and not the village. Hence, I think that Jura might have the ability to enter that dimension. And the cube that's been behind him for like several chapters is an indicative of that. Therefore, I think while Jura will move into that dimension and carry out his instinctual desire by eliminating Naruto, the rest of the Shinjus will also begin to carry out their desires. Anyways man, as always, I'll be rating the chapter and its cover out of 10. Now the cover from this chapter is heat. Although it has like a very stoic position and posture, it really fits the character itself so I don't hate it. And the colors are also like going along very nicely. So for this chapter cover, I'ma give it a solid A man and that's like a high number for a chapter cover. Like I rarely give it that. Now when it comes to chapters, sometimes it's very dialogue heavy and some other times it's like fight action heavy. Now I'm fine with both, obviously I enjoy the actions more but those are like red pass very quickly and with the dialogue heavy ones you gotta digest it and it's very overwhelming sometimes. So yeah man the chapter felt very fast paced and I'ma give it like a 7 max if I'm being very generous. Now I don't hate it and a 6 or 7 is really not bad. I mean it's better than average and my favorite part of the chapter will definitely be when Mitsuki unleashes his true power like his new technique and just because of that I bumped it up to 7. But yeah man, let me know your thoughts on the chapter and uh, if you have reached this far, I just want to say that at chapter 6 was on the process, it was, I was finishing it but then I just realized that chapter 7 had been released and I felt like kind of unnecessary to be honest. Yeah, at the moment you're just lying there, I don't really know what to do with it. I might just like make different parts of the video and do something with it man. But yeah man, anyways, uh, I'll try to be more like frequent with my uploads but uh, yeah man, thank you for watching and uh, take care.